My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop. And I'm gonna be rude and pour myself some coffee. <laughs> Today we're gonna to talk about perimeter discs. So a lot of people have been asking this question. Why would you want a perimeter disc? We are the Uh, and why, the pros and cons basically of a perimeter disc. So if you haven't seen a perimeter disc, the, oh, what's it called? I want one. It's the Lightning, the X12, is it the X12? I don't know, XR12? I can't bloody remember. Um, yeah, so the Buell has a wheel. It's not a bad massive circle, is it? And the disc is here, like this, so it's mounted. This is a really shit drawing. Like this, with your caliper around the perimeter in a sense, wherever the caliper is. And I think the caliper's here with your fork or offset. Um, why would you want a perimeter disc? Uh, less heat. Less heat, a lot less heat. You have a massive disc now. Um, and there's a lot more material, there's a lot more atoms, there's a lot more steel in this disc which means that um, distributing heat throughout your disc as your pads clamp on um, will mean that your disc basically operates cooler. The other thing as well is that is you have, um, they actually break, uh, the braking forces are higher because there's your pivotal point there and we are braking here like so. Uh, no, we're not, we're resisting the other way you idiot, fuck me. We're resisting here like this. We're trying to slow down, we've got to counteract, the wheel's going this way, we need to counteract um, that motion, not push it forward. That means your brakes make you go faster. <laughs> so we're trying to counteract this rotation, and rotation, force, a force applied at a, um, uh, around a pivotal point is a torque. So this is a torque that's being applied here, and this torque, because we are further out, applying the same force, brake pads are pretty much, and calipers are pretty much, if you have a four-pot caliper on just say an R1, or a four-pot caliper on just say a Buell, and they apply the same amount of force, then you are going to increase your torque around this centre. All is good! So why the fucking are all bikes like this? Why do all bikes have perimeter discs? Um, quite a few reasons. <laughs> Um, so the cons of this, the negatives, and I've decided to do negatives in red and positives in blue because the black is a horrible pen. Um, the negatives of this is your disc is huge, so it's more expensive. So expense is number one. Number two is because your disc is so big and because these forces are being applied, it means that this is the more likely to warp is this disc it is a bigger disc that pretty much has that it's not as stiff as construction so it's more likely to warp under heavy braking the other thing as well is is if you look at stuff like um the buttons which we've spoken about or bobbins whatever you want to call them um on your rotary disc is the fact that these are floating discs and um, they are allowed to expand they're allowed to expand when they get hot and they're floating they're basically free to the world the problem with this disc is that your your expansion is radially outwards just like a normal disc but this is into your wheel um, it basically means that you just have to be very careful how you design um, this floating disc the other way around this is just to have a fixed disc like the r5 has a fixed disc and have a fully floating caliper that's a way around it um, but yeah, this heat dissipation is one of the really good reasons, the torque, um, but the expense of it also means that you have to design your wheel to incorporate that instead of um, normal bikes where you can just basically, you can switch wheels for different wheels as long as you can get the right spacing and stuff. Where with this, this is directly mounted um, to the wheel and, you know, with other bikes when you want to swap, if you want to swap wheels or something like that, as long as everything lines up you're all good to go and as long as you can even change the disc size as long as the whole the whole pattern is the same and even then you can try and kind of fudge around if you wanted to <coughs> the main reason is is that the benefits of torque so your actual stopping power and the cooling um, can be designed out quite easily with your conventional discs it's this costing the manufacturers don't like it 
you know it is a big fucking disc you know what i mean and it costs you more a lot more in the long run as well but it's not a bad thing you know and a lot of the time like with buell they used it because it looks sexy it looks different the whole bike is different oil tank in the swing arm fuel tank in the frame clear plastic tank pulley this that and the other perimeter disc and all and, and so on and so on and so on and so on you know they were just trying to make a bike which is why i want one really want one i saw one for three and a half grand recently and i nearly bought it um but yeah you can see uh some of the benefits and some of the the cons and the expansion and all that so you can design this out quite easily but it's just one of the things to take into consideration hope that makes sense i'll see you in a bit